701? Thank you. Which is really 70, because that's fast. That's fast, okay. But it is yeah, 70. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting of the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee to order. It's Monday, March 6, 2023. Yeah, we're at um, And it is 7 p.m. We are in the Alderman and Nick Chamber. If the clerk could please call the roll. Alderman at large, Shoshana Kelly, Chairwoman. I'm here. Alderman at large, Ben Clemens, Vice Chair. Alderman Clemens is sick. Alderman Tyler Govea. Here. Alderman Thomas Lopez. I believe he's traveling. And Alderman Derek Tebow is here. Uh, great, we have a quorum. Um, also in attendance, we have Mayor Jim Donjas. Anybody else? Um, oh, and Alderman Clark. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we will start this evening with public comment. If there's anyone in the gallery who would like to speak to anything being acted on, upon by the committee, please come up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record, and you'll have three minutes. Hi, uh, I'm Dante Castellano, address 4 Bicentennial Drive. And yeah, I was just want to talk about the recommendations from the Nashua Energy and Environment Committee. Definitely support them. A lot of thought has gone into them. Uh, definitely a lot of time spent on them. So I just hope to see those moving forward. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dante. Is there anyone else who'd like to give public comment this evening? Hi, my name's Taylor Berry, um, my address is 33 Wellman Ave. And um, as a young person in Nashua, I definitely want the city to pursue more environmentally friendly actions so that we have a healthy, sustainable um, city to live in in the future in a better world. So, yeah. Thanks, Taylor. Is there any additional public comment from the gallery? Okay, great. Uh, communications. Um, I move to suspend the rules to accept uh, communication that came in after the agenda was prepared um, from Thanks. Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development. Okay. It's correcting the record of an error in appointments for the National Performing Arts Center Board of Trustees. Uh, Amber Morgan's and appointment in Philip Sconces terms were flipped. So Philip Sconces would have a term to expire February 14th, uh, 2020. Six and Amber Morgan would be February 14, 2024. Okay, you've heard the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. All right, we're going to start off with interviews. We've got quite a few this evening. I see that you are ready and prepared, Mayor. Yes. You. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So first, we have the uh, mindful advisory. So could Steve Kenny please uh, please come up? Nine Falls Park Advisory Committee, uh, Stephen Kenny, new appointment, 9 Sagamore Road, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03062. Term to expire January 10th, 2026. 20, Come on up to the, yeah. in the chamber. For anyone who hasn't been here for an interview, you can come sit in the, in the horseshoe with us uh, for the interview portion. Thank you. Um, so, Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, this is uh, Mr. Kenny, who is uh, very interested in serving on the Mine Falls Park Advisory uh, Committee, and we're very happy to uh, have his interest and his uh, willingness. Uh, he's, you know, has a career in in the uh, business world, worked in a number of uh, jobs or several jobs throughout his career. Now he's with uh, Massey Bioservices in Pepperell, but he has uh, shown a strong interest in Mine Falls Park. Uh, and helping out there. He's been to uh, a meeting of the advisory committee and he understands their role. Um, and therefore, um, I am very happy to nominate him as uh, a member of the Mindfuls Advisory Committee. And Thank you, I will uh, turn things over to Steve just to tell you a little bit about himself and why he's interested in this particular uh, committee. Mr. Kenny. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Nashua, and if you uh, lived here long enough, you realize that a lot of people in Nashua can't say that anymore. Um, so I, I take great pride in being born and growing up here. Uh, my, family has, uh, my family grew up here. 
uh, my brother's here, and over that period, too many years to mention, I've used Mind Falls quite a bit, biked in it, hiked in it, snowshoed in it, and it's a great resource, and I like the, the history behind it, and I'd like to make sure that it's uh, sustained so that it can be used by generations to come. Great. Thank you so much for stepping forward. Um, are there any questions from the committee or other alderman? No? Okay. Thank you so much. We'll take up your um, appointment in just a few minutes. Well, Thank you so much. We quite a few people. Well, Thank you. Here, so. <laughs> All right, now could everybody involved or the who is being considered for the Performing Arts Center Board of Trustees just come up and sit in the seats up here? There's a few available. <laughs> <laughs> sit anywhere you like. Mics are direction. And I shower just to let everybody know. Um, <laughs> yep, you can wait a minute. All right, side. so Performing Arts Center Board of Trustees. Uh, we have Mary Lou Blaisdell, new appointment, 206 Main Street, National New Hampshire, 03060, term to expire February 14th, 2028. We have Ian Buckley, new appointment, 207 Main Street, National New Hampshire, 03060, term to expire February 14th, 2027. Judith Carlson, uh, new appointment, 15 Manchester Street, National New Hampshire, 03064, term to expire February 14th, 2026. We have Richard Lannon, new appointment, 7D Taggart Drive, Nashville, New Hampshire, 03060, term to expire February 14th, 2028. We have Jay Minkara, new appointment, 13 Mount Pleasant Street, Nashville, New Hampshire, 03064, term to expire February 14th, 2025. Amber Morgan, a new appointment, 20 Lock Street, Nashville, New Hampshire, 03064, term to expire February 14th, 2024. Uh, Lindsay Rinaldi, new appointment to Lock Street, National New Hampshire, 03064, term to expire February 14th, 2027. And Philip Sconces, new appointment, term to uh, 14 Ashland Street, National New Hampshire, 03064, term to expire February 14th, 2026. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, do you want to speak to your... <clears throat> yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, Lindsay Rinaldi and Philip Sconces could not make it tonight, so uh, I will introduce our other nominees. Uh, Mary Lou Blaisdell is, I think, well known to everyone. Um, she has been the owner and operator of Design Warriors on Main Street for 15 years or so. She's been president of the, or chair of the uh, Downtown Improvement Committee for quite some time, uh, but overall is a downtown activist. Uh, she has been supporting downtown and particularly the Performing Arts Center uh, downtown for a long time, but Performing Arts Center since its inception and has helped to uh, steer this project uh, from start to finish. So uh, she will be, I think, a very strong addition to the uh, committee. Um, Ian Buckley uh, is here. Ian is uh, vice president of Michael Timothy's Dining Group. Uh, they operate, as you know, two restaurants in downtown, Surf and MT Local. Uh, a cornerstone, a mainstay of downtown. And uh, he is vice president of operations for that company. Uh, you know, is very interested in the Performing Arts Center and uh, I think will be a great addition to uh, the board of directors. Uh, next, we have Judy Carlson, who Judy is here. Judy has been very involved in Nashville for a long time, particularly with the arts. Uh, she is on the National Arts Commission. She's been on the steering committee of the uh, Performing Arts Center. Um, she uh, raised the money for the Op Oponovich mural um, and done so many other things for uh, mur the, uh, related to the murals in downtown. Um, she, is also, she has been on the steering committee for the Performing Arts Center as well uh, after uh, a long career in business and in the private sector. So um, she also will be a strong addition. Uh, Rich Lannon, uh, owner of Lannon Company, has put untold number of hours in the, uh, in the Performing Arts Center, but generally has been uh, involved in the downtown for a long time. He's on the Downtown Improvement Committee uh, and um, has just been a very positive influence for Nashville's downtown for a long, long time. 
uh, Amber Morgan. Um, Amber is, um, has recently uh, uh, brought Fort Gage, so now a downtown business owner. Thank you. That was a good, a good move for her. Uh, she was ch the chair of the citizen advisory group for Imagine National Master Plan. Uh, she was very instrumental in the dog park issue and still is. Um, just generally involved in the community uh, in many ways. Uh, has been an entrepreneur and started a number of businesses, but now uh, is devoting her time to uh, Fort and Gage on West Pearl Street. So I will ask uh, each person to kind of just say a little bit about themselves and of their interest. Oh, and Jay, I forgot Jay. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, there's so many. Uh, we're putting out. We usually do one at a time. So. Uh, Jay Mincara is, um, has been involved in the city, you know, in many different ways. He is now the uh, director of the uh, National Regional Planning Commission, but before that was economic development director for the city, was the economic development director in Man is Manchester, uh, did economic development for Springfield, Mass., uh, and uh, he has a wealth of experience with Downtown, our downtown and downtowns in general, uh, and therefore will be a valuable addition to the, uh, to the board. So why don't we just go around in order, uh, order of starting with Jay and just um, tell, you, tell the committee a little bit about yourself and of your interest in the board. Just one moment before we proceed. So this is a little bit different doing it this way. We thought it'd be easier because a lot of the same questions will come up. So. For our transcriptionist, please just say your name if you're asked a question um, before you answer the question so they know who's answering. All right, thank you so much. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, so uh, Jay Mincara, 13 Mount Pleasant Street, and uh, I'm just really uh, honored to, uh, you know, be nominated for, for this position. Um, you know, as the mayor said, I, I've been involved with the city in many different ways for many years, and in particular uh, in, in the arts. And I can actually remember back when I was working for the city, I think probably the first feasibility study that we did for an arts center. Uh, and there have been just so many iterations. And, and to me, it's just tremendously exciting to actually see the doors almost ready to open. So I'd really be pleased to have the opportunity to be involved in furthering it, you know, or to continue to further it. Thank you, Jay. Do you want to go with Ian? Uh, Ian Buckley. Uh, although I'm not from Nashua, I was pretty much raised on Main Street. Uh, my family's been doing business on Main Street for the last 27 years. I plan on doing business on Main Street for the next 50 plus. So obviously, the Performing Arts Center is, a, you know, a, a huge benefit to not only Nashua as a whole but the downtown. So. Um, I would very much like to be involved in helping it flourish and anything I can put forth in terms of, uh, you know, help or, or opinions, I would love to. Um, that's what I have. Thanks, Ian. Hi, City. Judy Carlson, 15 Manchester Street, Nashua. Um, I've lived in Nashua since 1973 and raised my daughter here. And since about 2010, have been volunteering, uh, focused on furthering the arts here in Nashua and spent some time on the board of uh, City Arts Nashua as vice president there and that's where I got involved in uh, Vivian's Dreams mural and the restoring the Yankee Flyer Diner and also the uh, mural over at 14 Court Street, as well as uh, being very involved with a lot of the, uh, the city's artists. and have been part of this project since it was under Mayor Lozo. So it's been a long time. And the first interviews they did and the feasibility studies and all that through uh, having served on the steering committee, uh, I just think that this whole thing has been one of the most well planned out and well thought out enterprises that the city has taken and since I've lived here, and a lot of research went into it. And I'm part of City Arts, uh, National Community Arts, and helped form that organization, which is the nonprofit supporting the center. So I'm really looking forward to serving on this committee and using my background in uh, fi finance as well, because in my work life for many years, I managed large PR agencies 
and large advertising agencies with big budgets. So I have a lot of experience in working with uh, outside contractors and uh, managing budgets in that time, you know, in the 10 to $18 million range. So I'm really looking forward to this. Thank you, Judy. Rich. Uh, good evening, Rich Landon. Um, my office is at 70 Tagger Drive in Nashua. Um, I was not born and raised in Nashua. I was born right across the border in Tingsboro, but uh, married a Nashua girl. And but I've been in real estate in Nashua and have had offices in Nashua since 1978. So shows you my age there. Um, but uh, got involved in downtown because I own mixed-use buildings in downtown, and one of them was 26 years ago, I think now, uh, the old Sears block. And many years ago, I was asked to be on a committee, and that probably unfortunately started. I still blame um, Terry from the tele uh, from the, Nat yeah, the National Telegraph and Donna Lee for doing that to me. Um, but uh, it started off with the, um, the uh, service advisory committee that eventually turned into downtown improvement committee that I'm on with Mary Lou and been on that since the, since the inception. And that turned into being on some studies for the Performing Arts Center. Um, and then one committee led it to another. Um, so I was on the steering committee, and when, unfortunately, Brian McCarthy passed, I became the chair of that steering committee. And that's what really got me excited about this center. I, I always said I'm not really into the arts until I start realizing really what the arts is and how many concerts I go to, whether it's friends, family, even my grandkids, and go to plays and stuff. So I go to a lot of stuff. Um, not thinking that's the arts, and it is. Um, Positive Street Art made a big impact when they did the nostalgia mural on my building when they tore down the, the, the church, tore down the building that abuts me. And that's what kind of got things going. And then one committee ended up at another committee um, and various boards. And then uh, National Committee of the Arts is where, you know, as a couple of the members, like Judy and Mary Lou are on as well. And um, that's been a terrific experience. I've met a lot of, you know, great people in both the steering committee um, and seeing the, the, this whole project being planned and the National Community of the Arts meeting a lot of great people that have put up anywhere from $100 to a million dollars and everything in between to donate. So we have, you know, we have like 500 donors that have donated their hard money into the property that, you know, so it just shows you the backing that the, you know, people in Nashua have. Um, so it's exciting, um, it's nerve wracking. I'm there almost every day um, walking through and seats are being put in and being literally as we speak this morning and, so it's exciting, and we're, you know, I think three weeks and five days before opening, something like that, and I'm coming down the hours. Um, but it's exciting, it's a little nerve-wracking, but uh, it's just gorgeous, and it's just been a pleasure, you know, seeing it form from its inception. So, I, you know, I'd be honored to be on the board. Great. Amber Morgan, 20 Lock Street. I have spent countless hours as many as him inside well next to the building um from fort and gauge we've been able to really view the outside in view of the building uh similar to to surf as well and it's been incredible to see the transformation um the all of the incredible employees that are coming and going every single day and working tirelessly um, and you can see it at the end of the day when they're walking up the stairs to go to their car. It's, uh, it takes them probably a longer, much longer time than it does the other way. Um, so a little bit about myself, born in Nashua, um, schooled in Nashua, left for about 10 years and came back. And since then, I've been immersed myself in downtown through various, uh, started with just an event or two, um, attending, and then slowly you get pulled into you know, volunteering, and then it, here you are, uh, 10 years later, on uh, be sitting before you talking about joining three committees. So I absolutely love this city with all of my heart. Um, and we had a great time when we did the master plan. It was incredible to see how we can serve all members of the city and all age ranges, uh, backgrounds, um, and this is going to serve them as well. The Performing Arts Center is going to really be kind of the end cap on what that master plan was striving, striving to show. This, may this be the first uh, check mark that comes from that. Um, and I'd be honored to serve on this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, Mary Lou. Mary Lou Blaisdell. I live at uh, 32 Webster Street, and I own Designwares uh, directly across the street from the Performing Arts Center. 
I think the last few years, Judy, Rich, and I have been tied at the hip. <laughs> we probably spend more time with each other than we do with our families. Um, starting from in the Downtown Improvement Committee when the idea was put before us to fund a study to see if the city could actually um, sustain a performing arts center. And from that study, we moved on to the steering committee fundraising um, and Rich has put in more time than any of us um, in this from taking the lead on this, which we're very thankful for. It's something that you walk through it and you're just captivated by what it is and what it can do and what it will be. It's very exciting. I am honored to be a part of it. It's been a lot of hard work, but worth every minute of it. And um, I join everybody else in stating I'd be proud to be a trustee for this work for the Performing Arts Center. Thank you. Okay, so that's everyone. Um, Alderman Tebow, do you have a question? Sure. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's not much, it's not really a question. I just wanna thank everybody for coming tonight and being part of this committee. Um, you know, this uh, Performing Arts Center is a long time coming and it's certainly had its bumps and there's been people that have attacked it and they still attack it today. If you go down the wrong hole on Facebook, <laughs> you will find people still making some form of comment on it, whether they don't like the way it looks or they don't like the acts that are coming, but it's a small, small portion of the population of Nashua. We have 90,000 people. And so for you guys, have, that have, the ones that, have, uh, that are coming to this for the first time or the ones that have been working on it the whole time, I, I, I thank you for all the stuff you've had to be put through because it's certainly, you know, we have you guys, you guys volunteer for this, you know, you don't get paid for it. Um, and to come in here and to be able to put this in action and make something that's going to be great for the city, despite some of the roadblocks you guys have had to face is incredible. And I just wanted to thank you guys. And I really look forward to it. It's going to make a lot of people happy and it's going to be great for the downtown. It's going to bring uh, even, even more uh, vitality or vitality than it has today with uh, people roaming around and you know visiting all the other sh places that are on, on, on Main Street, whether it's a shop or whether it's a restaurant. And uh, it, it's good for the city. And I uh, thank you so much for, for, for being part of this and for being part of the future of this as well as you, you jump onto this board. So thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Other questions or comments for Alderman Gouveia? Thank you, Madam Chair. A lot of the same of what my colleague uh, Alderman Tebow said, just thank you for volunteering these uh, any board or committee throughout the city of Nashville, anytime you want to volunteer to help make the city fundamentally better uh, is good in my eyes. And th thank you all for the time and the hard work you've all put into the project. Thank you. Follow me, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I'm never short on words, so um, <laughs> <laughs> can't help myself. My mother said I was born talking. Um, so I, I want to thank all of you too, and I've worked with many of you in different committees. Uh, Amber, I've been in committees with you, Mary Lou, Rich, Judy as well. Jay, I've worked with you. And I just want to, a couple of things. First off, four of the eight volunteers here are Ward 3 members. I say that we have the most volunteering. And one of them, Ms. Rinaldi, who's not here, her business is in Ward 3, just, just saying. Um, <laughs> I, I think Ward 3 has the bug of volunteering. And you all volunteer for more than one thing. When I listen to um, why someone wants to be on a committee or should be on a committee, I always look for that connection. And um, Alderman Lopez, who, who isn't here, always asks, have you ever gone to that meeting before? And where there's never been one, but each of you has a connection, whether it be downtown, whether it was part of the steering committee. Amber, you said three committees, you're on four. Um, because the head back. <laughs> Mary, Mary Lou, the same thing with you. You're on so many committees and Rich and Judy and, and so on. You're all on, on all of these committees and you continue to volunteer, which just shows me how much you care for this, for this city and so on. And um, I, I want to say this publicly to you, Rich. When Brian passed, you stepped. Thank you. I'll settle in there, please. Um, I also want to thank you all for coming forward to be on this committee. Um, it's been, I couldn't believe it when you said three weeks, that kind of <laughs> blew my mind because the reason I'm sitting here is because I was sitting there the night it got voted down the first time. 
Um, and I was here till midnight with many of you, I think yeah. almost all of you, mm -hmm. um, and so I was pretty frustrated. So um, really excited to see it going up. Someone who's been in downtown uh, for almost 10 years with my business, um, and I know many of you individually, I know how much work you put into this. It's gonna be an incredible asset for our city, and you guys will be incredible trustees for something that we have worked so hard to plan out and in, and, it, and will be successful for the city and for our, um, our entire community. So I'm looking forward to, can't believe it's three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah. uh, so thank you for your, um, for your willingness and we will take up your nominations um, very shortly. Thank you. Um, I think we need Amber to stay. Yep. <laughs> uh, citizens Advisory Thank Commission. You all. Uh, Thank you. Amber Morgan, new appointment, 20 Lock Street, Nashua, New Hampshire, 0364, term to expire February 21st, 2026. So, um, Amber Logue, or excuse me, Amber Morgan is... <laughs> Four million uh, <laughs> is, uh I've also nominated her for the, for the Citizen Advisory Commission. This is a very <laughs> difficult volunteer position. Uh, because it involves spending a lot of time reviewing applications for from nonprofits for a very limited amount of city money. Uh, Jason Talerski is the chair of that organization or that committee uh, commission. Uh, but uh, as she has shown as chair of the uh, committee overseeing Imagine Nashua, the master plan. Uh, Ms. Morgan is willing to put in uh, all the time and effort and energy required to do a really good job, which she did on that, uh, the, the master plan. And um, she's expressed an interest in being uh, in this role. And given her long history and her very uh, successful history with the city, uh, I'm sure she will again do a very good job. Amber, do you want to add? You know, you just gave your bio, but. <laughs> I'll add specifically to this committee. Um, so in light of a, the question that Alderman Lopez usually asks, um, yes, I have attended uh, their meetings and have read through all of the incredible amount of information um, in heart and soul that our nonprofits within the city pour into these applications knowing um, the limited amount that is available. Um, and I learned <laughs> some new nonprofits, ones I didn't necessarily realize were even based here in Nashua and the amount of services that they do offer. Um, and it's, it's mind blowing, it's enlightening, um, and it would be an honor to, uh, to serve in that committee as well. And as far as a time conflict, not that anybody asked, but just in case. Um, the Board of Trustees m will meet quarterly um, and the Citizens Advisory Committee meets weekly for basically just the first quarter of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions for the committee? <coughs> Sorry. So I'll try here. No questions? Okay, great. We'll take up your one of your four. Thank you. Just a minute here. Um, do you want to speak to Mr. Darby? Um, Ms. Uh, Will Darby is um, going to come up and... Um, I'll read it for the record. Um, for the Environment and Energy Committee, William Darby, new appointment, 13 Jensen Street, Nashville, New Hampshire, 03062, term to expire February 21st, 2026. So um, Mr. Darby lives in uh, Ward 8 and was recently elected as a state rep from Ward 8. Uh, he, of course, has a, a you know, career in business, uh, but is very interested in advancing the city's energy goals, which are to reduce uh, the use of carbon fuels and reduce the city's carbon footprint. Uh, we already heard from uh, Ms. Mr. Castellano and Ms. Berry, who are citizen members of the committee, in, uh, expressing um, their commitment to, to the same effort. But uh, uh, Mr. Darby is environmentally uh, very interested. He's um, shown that over a whole number of years. Uh, he's shown an interest in this committee. He's, and I thought this was interesting. He has six daughters.
pretty good. Um, uh, raised here in Nashua, and uh, uh, he's a software engineer, uh, but I'm sure he will, he worked very hard. Uh, you could see that when he was seeking to become a state representative, and I'm sure he'll do a great job on this uh, committee. So I ask uh, Mr. Darby to tell you a little bit more about himself and of his interest in the in Energy and Environment Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, so I, we do have six daughters, my wife and I. They are all grown, um, but only two were raised in Nashua, the others uh, outside of Nashua. Um, yeah, so I, uh, my name is Will Darby. I've been, I live at 13 Jensen Street. Um, I've been in Nashua, I've been living in Nashua for 20 years this year. Um, I am a software manager at Arista Networks, which is right down at Exit One as well. Um, and I have, my background is, um, I have bachelor's degrees in uh, computer science, computer engineering, and master's in computer science. Um, uh, like Mayor Don just said, I'm a uh, first-term state rep, and I'm on the Resource Recreation and Development Committee. Um, only because I didn't have the, the time working full-time to be on um, the uh, um, Energy Committee, which is, um, which is most aligned with um, energy environment, <clears throat> um, and where a lot of my interests lie. Um, I've had a lifelong, I've had lifelong interests in the environment, um, in protecting the environment in particular. Um, my hobbies, uh, my, most of my hobbies have to do with outdoors. Um, they involve things like uh, where I've uh, personally experienced the impacts of climate change, fishing, um, hiking, uh, bow hunting, for example. And, um, and I'm worried about the environment. And so I want to put my free time into uh, uh, Imp, uh, have impact to protect our environment and, and to protect our city. Um, I am, um, I'm also hoping that with my, my role in Concord that I'll be able to bring the needs and, the, um, and also the concerns of Nashua um, in, uh, with respect to energy and environment up to, um, up to the State House and represent those. Um, I have attended the last two um, energy and environment um, meetings and I've been impressed with um, the, the energy, um, the, the range of uh, topics discussed, and, and really the, um, what seem, appears to me to be the success of, um, the, of the committees towards their goals. So um, thanks a lot for the consideration. Great. I'll start off by saying thank you for stepping forward. I know you've attended our meetings, and it's my favorite. Of the of the month for sure, um, and I think that you also serving at the state house is nice to be able to have that sort of back and forth in terms of what's going on there. Um, oftentimes, the committee would like to be, you know, doing some advocacy work, and we're not, it's hard to keep up with all the bills up there in the state house. So, I think that would be a real asset to the committee to have uh, someone who knows kind of very intuitively and is there often what's going on up there. Um, but thank you for stepping forward. We have been working very hard on the goals and I'm looking forward to have new voices. Alderman Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I too want to thank you for stepping up and uh, you know, being my state, one of my state reps. Um, I appreciate the work you do up there and uh, I think you'd be a perfect fit for this. I mean, um, just to be transparent, you came to me and asked me if, if it would be a good fit for you and I, I said yeah and I went to the mayor and, and, and got you in, in front of uh, him and his team. and. Um, so I, I think what you're doing is great. I, I'm all for, I mean, despite working forever for Source, I'm 100% on trying to get better energy and uh, trying to make, make it cleaner and doing whatever we can to, to save money at the same time at the city and the state level. So thank you so much. I appreciate it, Will. Any other questions or comments from the committee? Alderman Glee. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, thank you, uh, Representative Darby. I appreciate it. and I agree with you. I was a state rep up until this time. I decided not to run. But it is helpful to have a voice up there that is here as well. Um, you can bring that conversation to both ends. You can explain to your uh, colleagues up there why it is important, whether it be for Nashua or for the state, and vice versa on this end. So I truly appreciate. Um, and, I, and I know it's a lot of work up there. Some people don't realize it, but you earn your hundred dollars a year. So, uh, thank you so much for stepping up. Okay. All right. Comments? Thank you very much. We'll take up your. Um, now we have one more interview, Madam. Yeah. Chair. So we have to. We're going to go out of out of order and take out um, tabled in committee.
Yeah. So I'd like to make a motion to uh, remove from the table the appointment of Adala J. Minkara to the Board of Assessors. Okay. The motion is to remove from the table. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And nobody's opposed. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I, I am nominating uh, Jay Minkara for the Board of Assessors. Uh, this is a very important board for the city, a three-member board. Currently, the members, we have two members, and so we need a third. Uh, we have Paul Bergeron, the former city clerk, um, and we have a gentleman by, by the name of Bob Early, who's not a resident of Swart Terrace, <laughs> a different Bob Early, uh, who's in the property management business. Uh, uh, Mr. Mincara, you've heard about his long involvement with the city and with economic development. Uh, but he is also <clears throat> a, a graduate of law school. He went to uh, New Hampshire Law School, uh, and he has a degree in community planning. Uh, he uh, is willing to serve in a difficult role, I would say, you know, one that we've had a hard time filling. So I really appreciate his willingness to uh, step forward for this. Um, in addition to all everything we've talked about, um, you know, he's, this doesn't have a direct bearing on the Board of Assessors, but he's been very involved in commuter passenger rail for a long time. Um, his legal expertise will, um, back to the Board of Assessors, his legal expertise will uh, be a great addition to the board because uh, they currently do not have that at, at the moment, uh, although they get advice from the legal department, but uh, Mr. Minkara will be able to uh, play a significant role there and um, he's very level-headed, very good judgment, uh, and dispassionate, and will be able to fairly um, judge any issues that come before them, such as requests for abatements. Um, with his analytic ability, we'll be able to you know, sort out the facts for and against anybody who is seeking an abatement and render a fair judgment on uh, the uh, issues before the board. So I will turn it over to Mr. Minkara um, with the request that uh, you know you give him a strong recommendation for the Board of Assessors. Thank you, Mr. Minkara. <clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure I can add uh, too much to that, um, <laughs> you know, but just to say I, you know, I, I have at this point been a resident of the city for most of my life. Uh, I, I do think my background in planning and economic development, as well as my legal background, I think gives me a very strong understanding of land use, uh, land development, and the economics of land use and land development. Uh, so I, I you know, appreciate or believe I appreciate the importance of having a sound assessment for the city. Uh, and you know, I believe I could help contribute to that and to the extent that the Board of Assessors also, in, in essence, an appeal board, people seeking abatements, uh, you know, I, I do believe that I would be able to view people. I realize that um, you know, we, we paint things broadly and with a broad brush, but of course there's different circumstances that do compel people to come forward and say, uh, my assessment isn't correct, my assessment is inaccurate, and I think I have uh, the ability, the capacity, and the willingness uh, to hear people respectfully and try to make a fair and sound decision. Uh, so I, I would be honored to serve and uh, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Um, I think this is an incredible uh, person to put on the Board of Assessors. The background that you just described is, I, I, I don't know if you could have a better resume for being on the Board of Assessors. And I was, I was encouraged by your comments as well, but it's definitely uh, not one of the easier boards, but um, being able to listen um, and just be very down the, down, the, down the middle in terms of how you make your judgments will be really helpful. So thank you for stepping forward. Thank you for finding someone, Mr. Mayor, who really fit this in such a great way. Alderman Tiba, did you want to speak? Mm -hmm. No, I thought I saw your hand. No. Nope. Anybody else? Just me. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ma thank you Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. All right.
Okay. Okay. <laughs> Application to license hawkers, peddlers, iterant vendors, licenses. Uh, there is none. Appointments by the mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to recommend the following new appointment to the Mine Falls Park Advisory Committee, Stephen Kenny, with a term to expire January 10th, 2026. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to recommend the following reappointment to the Animal and Dog Park Advisory Committee, Amber Morgan, with a term to expire September 10th, 2025. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to recommend the following new appointments to the Performing Arts Center Board of Trustees, Jay Minkara, with a term to expire February 14th, 2025, Judith Carlson and Amber Morgan, both with, uh, actually Judith Car Carlson with a term to expire February 14th, 2026. Amber Morgan with a term to expire February 14th, 2024. Ian Buckley and uh, Ian Buckley to, with a term to expire February 14th, 2027. Mary Lou Blaisdell and Richard Lannon both with terms to expire February 14th, 2028. Heard the motion, are there any discussion on that motion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to recommend the following new appointment to the Citizens Advisory Commission, Amber Morgan, with a term to expire February 21st, 2026. Any discussion on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I'd like to make a motion to rec recommend the following new appointment. Uh, actually, can we do that one? We no, no, do the next one. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to rec uh, recommend the following new appointment to the Environment and Energy Committee, William Darby, with a term to expire February 21st, 2026. Heard the motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to recommend the following new appointment to the Board of Assessors. Abdallah J. Minkara with an indefinite term at the pleasure of the mayor. Heard the motion. Is there any discussion on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, Madam President, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Madam Chairwoman. Um, the downtown improvement, Ms. Mr. Hayes, reappointment. Did, um, I miss, did I mishear that? We. They both say new appointments. No, it says the, way it's written mine, on um, um, the thing it says reappointment. Weird, because in our. The legislation doesn't say that. Yeah, the legislation doesn't, doesn't say that. that. The agenda says reappointment. If it, that could be wrong. Yeah, I'm you? seeing reappointment as well. For both of them? Yeah. No, no. No, uh, um, no, just Mr. No, Hayes. Phil, just Mr. Philip Hayes. is an alternate to a member. So I don't know if that's a reappointment or a new appointment, but yeah, uh, yeah, so that says it's Mr. Hayes is a reappointment. Uh, you can read it. Tim has a oh. on that. Director Cummings. Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, so for the record, Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development and Director of Administrative Services. <laughs> uh, just to add some clarity to the question uh, at hand, uh, both uh, Philip Sconces and Edward Hayes are actually reappointments. They currently serve on the Downtown Improvement okay. Committee. Uh, uh, Mr. Sconces is full, uh, fulfilling the same capacity I believe he's being renominated for, which is an alternate. And then Edward Hayes has been a voting member on the committee, uh, which he currently is right now. So what I'm seeing, thank you for that clarification. What this says is that Philip yeah. is being moved from an alternate to a full member. Oh, maybe that's the case. So, so that would be a new one. Let's just hold this until we can get some clarity on those two. I apologize. Yes, it must be that he's moving from the alternate position to a full yeah. member. And Edward Hayes is currently a full member. He's just okay. a reappointment. He's oh. just both are reappointments. Sure about that one. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. I see Philip's Sconces once a month every Friday, <laughs> on first Friday of the month. Okay, so, so we'll leave Philip's because he's not here and it's a new appointment, but we are going to read Edward Hayes as a reappointment. Okay. okay. Director hey. Cummings says it's so. <laughs> All right, I'd like to make a motion to recommend uh, the following reappointment to the Downtown Improvement Committee. Um, Edward Hayes, Edward A. Hayes Sr. with a term to expire December 31st, 2025. You've heard the motion. Is there any discussion on that motion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, congratulations to everyone who was um, 
confirmed this evening, you'll be confirmed in person at the Board of Aldermen meeting in the future. Thank you for stepping forward. Um, okay, we are moving on to unfinished business. There is none. New business resolutions. Uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, to recommend R-23-093, adopting environment and energy committee recommendations. The motion is to recommend final passage of R-23093. Um, I know that Ms. Brown is here to speak on this um, as our energy manager. Do you have a presentation that you put in? You wanted to come speak on it. Come, come sit up with us. I did not make a PowerPoint. There's something sitting in the computer. I was like, who's is this? <laughs> We're good. Um, so she, she'll speak quickly on this, but I'm going to start off by no, trying to. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, go ahead and join us. Um, so I am the liaison to the Energy Environment Committee. Um, it is my, I, I don't want all my other committees to feel like they're not awesome too, but I really love this committee. Um, we've been working really tirelessly probably for a solid year on taking the goals that were put forward five or six years ago and making them a little bit more action oriented and having some uh, KPIs behind them. So really just making sure that we're saying, yes, we're all moving towards um, making some better decisions for the city that'll allow us to save money over the long term, but also make sure that um, future generations like Miss Barry um, we're talking about will have this, this incredible park system and all of the rivers, all those things that we all love um, will still be around. So um, we've been working really hard to just give up some really specific uh, goals and I'm gonna let Doria talk about it, but we've been meeting once a month for a year to come up with these. So hello, um, I'm here today to talk about the recommendations from the Environment and Energy Committee to the Board of Aldermen, which is a little bit surreal because I've been on the Environment and Energy Committee um, for six years and now I'm going on my seventh year. Um, first, I started off as a representative from a business called Worthen Industries and now I sit as a staff member because I loved working with the city so much. I couldn't think of a better career. Um, this resolution is very close to my heart because I helped develop the first recommendation to the Board of Aldermen, which was to be 100% renewable energy by 2050, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 20% by 2025, and to do a plethora of other projects, including get renewable energy, um, like solar energy for our city, to increase bikeability by implementing a bike share program, to hire an energy manager, and to get alternative transportation for our buses. And we have done almost all of those things. We have hybrid electric buses. We have a thriving relationship with bird scooters. Um, and we have implemented a bike share program, so it didn't work out as robustly as we hoped, but we definitely tried it out. We have hired an energy manager, which ended up being me. Um, and uh, we're very close to our 20% reduction by 2025. And um, I hope to have calculations for that in the spring so that's really exciting and um, we've added the buses we've almost completed every goal but being 100 percent renewable energy by 2050 and we're working on that goal right now through our community power program which will bring more renewable energy to our community and further us towards that goal so now today we have more recommendations from the board of aldermen which i hope will stro strengthen the community and um, I want to go over them today. Um, so in the resolution, the first uh, recommendation is to develop a sustainability plan to create a roadmap for the city of Nashua's sustainability goals um, by 2024. So currently we have a budget earmark to create a sustainability plan. So there is no financial input or extra financial input into generating this plan, but it will help us figure out exactly how to obtain some of the goals that we have, including the 100% renewable energy goal, but also further some of these recommendations that are in this packet and create new ways that we can improve on the sustainability side for the city of Nashua. Um, the second thing on the list is to improve building efficiency. So as the energy manager, um, there's a lot that I can do to help improve our energy efficiency of our buildings, but the 
only way I can do that is to have information through energy efficiency auditing. So the recommendation here is to select three buildings annually for energy auditing. And these buildings would be the buildings that have the most um, to improve energy wise and use a lot of electricity and natural gas and oil. And in doing these audits, we would be able to figure out what the goals are for that building to help drive down costs there and also improve sustainability. Um, the second part of that is for new building or major renovation projects with a joint special committee attached. Um, they should consult with the sustainability department before the project is finalized. So there have been a lot of new projects in Nashua, including the DPW new build, the new middle school project. And in those projects, they're, they're very great and they're going to bring a lot of improvement to the city of Nashua but there could be improvements in those builds with more of a sustainability mindset. Um, there are opportunities to electrify those buildings, to bring in more renewable energy options, but um, unfortunately we weren't able to meet that because there was not enough discussion at the beginning of the project and then the projects got finalized and there was not enough time to implement some of these newer, more innovative sustainability solutions to these builds. So this part of the resolution would allow for more input from the sustainability side of things throughout the entire building process for um, new builds and any sort of project that has a special committee with the Board of Aldermen in the beginning. So um, the next part of this resolution is to strengthen alternative transportation in the city. And it is to improve city walkability and bikeability by creating sidewalk corridors and bike lanes on all main streets. So um, bikeability and walkability is a big part of a community. Um, I have consulted with um, the city of Austin, Texas and uh, they have a robust uh, walkability and bikeability program. And one thing that they did was add a resolution to say that whenever they make improvements to a street or something like that, they would add bike lanes and make sure that there are sidewalks to improve the walkability of their city. And that's how they were able to make their city more walkable and bikeable and then decrease the carbon impact that they have as a community. Um, the next goal is to is to increase renewable energy generation. This is a continuation of the goal that we already had from the last recommendation. But this piece is to evaluate public land space for more renewable energy, in particular solar. So there isn't a lot of uh, public land that isn't developed in Nashua, but this is just uh, a recommendation to make sure that we consider renewable energy as we look at our public land. It's a, a low impact way to improve a piece of land and also bring more renewable energy generation that is local to the community. Um, I want to cite an example. When you buy renewable energy from, uh, let's say, a third party supplier, you, you see something on your um, bill that says um, maybe even when the community power program launches, you might see something on a like an option to opt up to 100% renewable energy. And that is great. It's um, giving money back to renewable energy generators and helps promote that in the country. But when you select that option, you might be investing in somewhere that's a little bit farther away, like a wind farm in Texas or maybe somewhere in Massachusetts or Connecticut. When we implement renewable energy projects here in Nashua, that directly benefits people in Nashua and really offsets emissions in a significant and meaningful way. So looking into developing land that is here to have renewable energy is an incredibly big deal. The next piece of the resolution and the final piece is to reduce municipal vehicle emissions. So here we say, have the SURF, the Capital Equipment Replacement Fund, um, passenger vehicle purchases be fully electric or when not possible, 
have a fuel efficiency of at least 40 miles per gallon if possible. So this particular piece of the resolution is um, standard for places like Austin, Texas and Sacramento or California. Um, it is uh, the next step, I think, in reducing our vehicle emissions and reducing our vehicle cost. Uh, an electric vehicle has significantly less cost when it comes to maintenance. Uh, you really only need to change the brakes and the tires and do software updates on um, these things. And by the time that the vehicle ages out of our fleet, the battery should still be operational on a passenger vehicle. So there are no extra um, added costs in battery replacements that the city needs to be concerned about. Um, and in purchasing these vehicles, we would be able to get ourselves closer to that 20% reduction by 2025 goal. Um, and I can tell you that some of the replacements that we have already made in our hybrid electric buses and using CNG buses have already taken us pretty darn close to that goal, if not there already. So um, the last part of that uh, piece, number five, reduce municipal vehicle emissions, is all city operated buildings should have at least one charging station by 2030. Um, this is just another piece of that goal. We're going to be adding electric vehicles to the fleet. We should have a place for those vehicles to charge. One place where we've run into issues is with the police department. They're getting their first electric vehicle, which is really exciting. But now the question is, how are we going to charge it? So if we add charging stations to our municipal buildings, we'll be able to power the vehicles that we would plan to get in the first half of that goal. And that is uh, my spiel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Um, great encapsulation of everything that we worked on. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions, but I just want to make one more comment before. Um, you touched on this quite a bit, but the recommendations in this legislation are really rec are there to make sure that we can get ahead of some of these conversations. So when we're replacing something for SURF and it's a 20-year um, commitment to this piece of equipment that's coming in, if we can get ahead of it and start to think about um, what an electric vehicle would look like, what that maintenance will be, that'll really help us to continue to, to drive down our emissions as a city. So, you know, whether it was that or talking about walkability when you replace the street, making sure there are sidewalks, uh, getting in when we can to make these improvements instead of trying to go back and do them later uh, when it will be much more costly. Um, and we know that any, any of these type of changes already are going to save money, but if we do them when we build the building, it's gonna be a lot easier than having to go back and audit and then, and then fix it later. So ultimately our goal was to try to get as much talked about and considered at the front, not, not to burden any department with um, you know, some, some mandate that's gonna make it really costly for them, but to think about it on a long-term scale in terms of um, what it's the overall cost of it is going to be and how we can better plan for our goals. So, Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam President, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I, I, try, I try to promote you. Um, so I have a, a question and just a couple of comments. So I think, you know, maybe starting to go forward when departments come to us with vehicle uh, plans to purchase a vehicle that maybe we get a, what they're going want to buy and what maybe the electric would be at cost. And, and then not just, okay, this one's 30,000 and this one's 40,000, but what the cost savings of the electric vehicle over the time of both vehicles would be, right? So trying to prove that in the long term it's cheaper, but right now we have to put up the extra whatever capital to, to pay for that because right now vehicles are, they're going up. Uh, something that maybe would have been 300,000, you know, year or two ago is now like five, 600,000. So um, things are getting, and it's not like the city's getting more money to, to, you know, that much more money to be able to buy these things. So I think that's one thing that, that could be something that then the alderman could vote on when, when they come. That way we have options as opposed to now they just come to us with here's the fire truck or, or whatever, here's the, the pickup truck uh, or whatever we need. Um, sidewalks is a great thing. I think a lot of us aldermen 
um, no matter what side of the aisle we were on here, have been pushing the sidewalk thing because we have lots of places that don't have sidewalks and then we have lots of places with broken, beat up sidewalks, including Main Street. And the walkability is to have sidewalks where people can walk, including kids going to school, which I know there are some, some wards that have problems with sidewalks going to, you know, for kids walking to school. So I think, I mean, that's a huge, huge, huge expense. Now, again, you're saying do it in stages. I think that, you know, as, as a road comes up or whatever, I think's fine, but that's gonna take a long time because there's a lot of sidewalks that need either fixing or just putting in a sidewalk. That so. is why there's no date to that goal. <laughs> okay. Um, and, you know, I talked to DPW on that once and they talked about maybe doing a similar thing to the, 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 that they do with the paving because we don't have anything for sidewalks, like, which I can't believe a city like us doesn't have you know, any infrastructure that says we can do sidewalks unless they fix them at, you know, patching here and there, uh, especially Main Street, you, know, you get trees coming out of them and, you know, sidewalks like this. Um, you know, I think one thing too is I think, and, and maybe you guys do this and I just don't see it, but that's maybe part of it, right? Promotion of, of good energy or, or good energy policy within the city of, of the 90,000 people, right? How do you push it to, you know, I was in healthcare insurance all my life. That was my thing. And then in the last year, going into a utility, I knew nothing about the stuff that I now, just over the last year, you know, unplug this. This is an old thing that's causing a lot of electricity issues. Or, you know, when you, you keep things plugged in, it still draws electricity. And so there's, there's a lot of different things that I've learned that I don't think people know out there. I mean, they didn't know about suppliers until Eversource went up like double, right? <laughs> Yeah. And now, we're, you know, and again, not everybody knows that we were at a, a ward meeting. I think it was uh, Alderman Clee's ward last week where a woman was like yelling about Eversource doubling and she never changed her supplier because people don't know about these things. So I think good energy policy about different things that people can do and, and more people need to know about solar because I think some people would be interested, but it's just they don't hear about it, you know, and they don't look into it. Um, so I'd like to see that. Um, and my question is, does the energy department or our energy department, uh, and this is gonna be a dumb question, I'm probably gonna say you should know this already, but do we have a budget? Like what's the budget for the energy department? Or is it just general under Director Cummings's budget? So we do not have an energy department. We have a sustainability department and our sustainability manager is uh, back there. I don't know by heart what our budget is, but we do have a budget. And would that encapsulate the whole sustainability department, not just energy? Per yes. se. That's a sustainability department. I'm gonna, I'm gonna refer to Deb. Thank Ms. Chisholm. Hi, Deb Chisholm, sustainability department manager. Uh, when, when we're talking about costs for specific projects, the sustainability department does not have a budget for that. We currently have a budget that is essentially for um, salaries, benefits, and you know some miscellaneous uh, costs, some contractor costs but nothing related to um, any of the items that are on the list and any type of implementation of that. Follow up. So, thank you. Um, so, I'm thinking, I mean, a lot of this is trying to save money, right? A lot of these things are trying to save money. So I, I get that, but some of them will require money to save money in the long run. And I just, getting that through, those things. I mean, I'm for all, you know, just about everything that you mentioned in some form or other. Um, you know, as long as we're not forcing departments to you have to get an electric vehicle, then you know I'm all I'm on board of, with it. Um, but it's just you know trying to find ways to pay for it to prove to people that in the long run it's going to save us money and it's going to be better for the environment. Those are the things that I want to make sure that when we're pushing the stuff that we're clear on, because anytime it comes to money, there'll be people pushing back on you know if I said today we're going to fix all the sidewalks, here's my here's my legislation to fix all the sidewalks, twenty billion dollars to fix them all or to build them all, people are going to laugh me out of this room, right? So. Um, even though everybody agrees it's needed. Um, so I just, I, I was just curious about the money thing because I know, you know, that's going to be one thing that's going to be concerning. And even with the vehicles, when DPW and fire and police come to us with vehicles, they're going to, right now the money's more. Yes, 10 years from now you, you're saving in cost. People aren't going to look at what we're saving. They're going to look at what we're paying right now and we don't have that money right now. So that's the problem. But in theory, I'm for all the stuff that you have in here as a policy. So. I just wanted to say that if you have any comments. I do. I do too. Go ahead. Um, so we've looked into this 
um, extensively. So uh, I noticed that you were talking about vehicle replacements and you mentioned like $300,000 to $500,000. So in this particular piece, we, we mentioned the surf and we say passenger vehicles. So there shouldn't be a vehicle that would cost $500,000 that would be a part of this. Um, I also want to mention that we put in a 40, uh, 40 miles per gallon efficiency there to make sure that there would be vehicles that do require fossil fuels that would be eligible for this. Um, and we also said when possible. For example, if there's going to be a pickup truck that is a significant difference in price and we can't prove um, a significant savings in capital expenditure when it comes to maintenance for that vehicle, uh, we would get the most efficient pickup truck possible and move on. Move on. But this, that part of the, legis of, the, of the resolution would require people to think in a more environmentally minded way. Um, can I get an electric vehicle? Is there an opportunity here? Oh, wow, I realize this is going to save me X amount of dollars uh, a year in um, repair savings or something like that. Um, the, a major part of this res resolution that would require some funding would be energy efficiency audits. But there's a lot of opportunity to get um, dollars from our utility programs to do these energy efficiency audits. Um, I also want to mention that you talked about um, telling people about uh, sustainability and how they can reduce energy in their homes. So a big program that should be launching at the end of April, beginning of May is Community Power. And with that program comes uh, na natural community power with access to people's addresses and information. We'll be able to send out mailers to tell them about utility rate options and options to be uh, opting up into a more renewable energy standard. And you'll be able to send out mailers throughout the year about ways that they can save energy and different tips as well. And then you would be able to access uh, email addresses if somebody enters in an email address and you can send information out that way. So th that's something I'm really excited about from that program. And um, the sustainability department does not have an energy budget, but all of these goals fit into other departments' budgets. So let's say you are going to be doing a rebuild. Now you have to think in a sustainability-minded way to bring in the sustainability department to talk about your project from beginning to end, and so on and so forth. So none of these really require an upfront dollar investment. It, they require people to think in a more sustainability-minded way as we progress as a city. Great, and thank you for that. I mean, I think that's what I was looking for, right? The, yeah. I want people to know those things because it's important. So when something does come in front of us, where we, you know, this will come to the BOA, um, it's important to know those things. And I think that's, that's great. I appreciate the work you guys have done on this. And um, thank you so much for those answers. Alderman Gouveia. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I like the legislation. I think it's good to be looking ahead, but obviously here in the horseshoe where the dollars and cents, uh, as my grandma would put it, you have gazintas and gazadas. You can't have more gazintas than you have gazadas. So, <laughs> you know, I think uh, these are great to have these type of recommendations, but at the same time, for me, it comes down to the dollars and cents on each individual project. But I'm absolutely willing to have the conversation. I think it's a conversation we all need to start having as we look forward and technology keeps progressing for sure. Thank you. And that was going to be my comment as well is that having the conversation is this is really the impetus here in terms of we we set some really broad goals and now it's how do we start making those part of every time we go to buy a vehicle buy it, it's let's have these conversations um definitely not going to run out and do everything in this uh tomorrow um but i think as we as things come forward that we can make um, iterative changes that's going to be the way that we could get to our goals Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you again, um, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I, I have a few comments and I'm going to kind of start from the back of the, the bus here, so to speak. And, and um, I, I'm Vice Chair of Finance and um, Alderman Gouvet is also on finance. And what we've been seeing lately is people coming in um, with vehicles that are costing 10% more than what we had originally budgeted for. And anything that's on the surf, every year we always put a plus 5%. And these are coming in even over that. 
So um, the taxpayers are now being hit with this extra cost. And, in, and I'm a, my, my mother used to always say, you know, penny wise and pound foolish, so that, you know, don't try to save money here and then end up having to spend in the other. And I hear what you're saying. But to have to put the money out to the gazintas and gazantas um, type of, um, of, of conversation is we're going to have to speak to the taxpayers and say this is going to cost. So um, I, I absolutely think it's something we have to do. I never like any kind of that's a mandate. And I, I'm not saying that this is necessarily a mandate. You put in a nice squishy word when not possible because yes. you don't define when not possible is. Could not possible be if the electric vehicle is 10 percent more than the non-electric vehicle? Um, do we want to say something to the effect of when you come to finance or public works or whatever committee, you have to bring both prices and show uh, at what, what is the, the break-even point of this particular thing? Um, I, I sit there with my husband when we're talking about whether or not to put solar on. In order to put solar on, I've got to put a new roof on. So at what point do we break even that that solar is going to, because in the long run, it's going to save us a lot of money, but we have to put that money up first. And that's kind of what we're facing in finance. Um, and when we talked about the NPD getting electric vehicle, it was for the ACO, for the animal control officer. And when they brought that to us, that vehicle had been on the surf for like $30,000. And when they came in, the non-electric vehicle was going to cost like $62,000, and the electric was going to cost sixty-four. dollars That's a no-brainer. Yeah. We're going to go with the $64,000. But the big question that did come up was, how are you going to charge it? We'll come to that bridge later on. I didn't feel comfortable. I, I voted for it, but I have to tell you, there was a knot in my stomach saying, OK, this is a bill that's going to come due later. And I could see the taxpayers going, no one answered that question. So these are things I don't want just to hear, we're going to cross that bridge when it comes. Um, I would love to, I, I, this is a beautiful plan, so please understand. And I have no problem with the, um, the audit cost, because I agree with you. I think we can work with um, other companies to try to help reduce that cost. So I, I thought that is, is a, is a non-issue. But I do have this issue when it comes to the vehicles. Sitting on finance, there's not been one vehicle that has come in um, on budget. Uh, I shouldn't say that. There, there were a couple that did actually came below budget, thank goodness. Um, but that was some odd circumstances is that someone nixed their deal and we were lucky enough to be able to grab it. Um, so everything that's on the surf, they're suddenly pushing the price up. And that's not even looking at electric. So if there's not much of a cost difference, I have no problem saying, let's go for that. But if we're looking at it as there's going to be a significant cost, even if in the end of the life cycle we actually make out, we're talking to people right now that have been hit with higher taxes, that have been hit with higher energy costs, that have been hit higher food costs, and we're going to say to them, we're going to increase the budget just a tiny bit more so that your grandchildren will be okay. And, and I know that just sounded horrible coming out. I don't mean them being okay as far as being able to breathe air and everything. I'm just talking about this. We do have to look at today as well as looking for tomorrow. So I just want you to keep that in mind as we discuss this. This one thing makes me not want to vote for this. I'm not on this committee, so I don't have a vote. But when it comes to the Board of Aldermen, I'd like to see that kind of changed a little bit. Um, but I agree with everything you say. I think in the long run, we're going to save money. The taxpayers will save money in the long run. And um, you know I had a um, very strong-minded um, constituent who felt we should immediately do everything electric. And I used to say to him, I agree with you. You're going to write the check for it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you know, he'd say, I know, I know, but you look forward. And he wasn't wrong. But at the same time, I, I just feel uncomfortable doing that to the people. Um, the bike lanes, um, putting in bike lanes and sidewalks, we do have kind of a fund for that every time there's a new build. So I will use um, the Bartlett Street build. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to put in sidewalks, and if they don't, they do a li in lieu of. So we do have money that is slowly being built to do sidewalks. <laughs> so when we do put in streets, there is that money that could be there, and it's supposed to be used for fixing sidewalks, putting sidewalks where they need to be. Um, so we need to keep that in mind, too, when we're talking about it. And bike lanes, the one thing that I've learned about bike lanes from the, um, the project that we're trying to do on Whitney and Locke 
is that for every bike lane that goes one direction, you have to have one that comes back. There has to be a return. So if it's a one-way street, you've got to find another street where they can come back. Um, so when we put bike lanes on a two-way street, that's two bike lanes. And Nashua is an older infrastructure, such as Main Street and so on. Maybe if we got that thing out of the middle there, we could definitely put in a nice, wide, perfect bike lane um, and, and so on. I don't foresee that going away. We spent a lot of money putting it in. But um, so again, I, I, if this is not a mandate, I know it's a resolution. Um, and up until we get to that item number five, I feel like it's not a mandate. It's kind of a let's try to get this done by these dates. But when I see item number five, I feel like it's a mandate. Okay. And that one kind of makes me feel a little bit um, squishy. And as far as the not enough discussion when we're doing the, the builds, I'm also on the joint special um, school building uh, committee. And we did talk about energy efficiency. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm sure they did when they were talking about the DPW, one of the things was it kept adding to the cost of this. So we did have those discussions, maybe not as in depth. It might have been nice to have somebody like you who, who really lives this and is excited about, or perhaps the chairwoman here, to have you guys there to give us this. But we had, um, I can tell you at least, and I, and I believe he's on Public Works also, we, we did have, um, when we were first discussing it, um, Alderman Jetty. And he talked about um, you know harvesting heat from the ground. And we, we did bring these in. And we did look at costs for some of these types of things. And it just brought the project that much over. And truthfully, none of us wanted to go to the taxpayer and say, can we get a couple hundred more thousand dollars out of you? So the discussions did happen. They may not have happened as in depth, but we did discuss every building. And that's when the discussion of putting solar panels on all the schools when we were redoing the roofs or redoing the building. So there was discussion in a, a back doorway. It doesn't necessarily mean that we, we did that. So I just want, for the record, I wanted to clarify that we, we did talk about um, some of those things. And then when it comes to item four, evaluate public land, um, I get a little anxious when I hear about public land, as long as it's not green space, <laughs> um, such as Pine Falls, Greeley Park, um, any of the other beautiful parks that we have. You know, if it were, um, you know, a, an old piece of, of Navy city land that isn't being used for something, and you know, I, I know even Alderman Gouvet was, was talking about a, a piece of public land turning it into community gardens kind of thing. So um, while I would love to see more of these, we have it by the Penichuk High School. Um, Penichuk has put in those solar panels. That, that's great. That's wonderful. And I'd like to see more. I'd like to see solar on as many of the municipal buildings as possible. Um, I just get a little anxious when we have so little green space in Nashville. I hear public space. It, it communicates to green space. I don't want to lose that for our people either. So I think when we talk about public space, I'd prefer to talk about public buildings than public ground space. So, you know, putting solar panels on the, the public um, buildings versus putting them on, on the ground. So okay. it's just my comments and thank you for hearing me out. I'm gonna respond to them, but I'll give you the option if you want. I've, so I, I've taken quite a bit of notes here. Okay. And I think that your input is very helpful and definitely something that can be considered and maybe honed into these goals to make them uh, a little bit more cognizant of budgets and more cognizant of green space and everything. So I just want to say thank you. And I think that's great input. Thank you for everything you do. You're, no, you're thank wonderful. You for I, can't you do. Enough, I can't say enough <laughs> kind things about you, honestly. So I'm going to respond. I'm going to slide my line here. Um, so in terms of putting green space where we wouldn't do that, that I feel like that's the antithesis of what the Energy Environment Committee is talking about. We're talking about, you know, some, something that have, we're not going to put in the middle of Greeley Park, but just making sure we're evaluating because we are already looking at the building roofs and where we can put them. So are there any additional, uh, more of a discussion point than a, let's get rid of parks for solar. Um, in terms of sidewalks, we do have a fund where you can pay to not put in the sidewalks, but it's not nearly enough to put in the sidewalk that they have had to put in. Uh, something that I've been trying to beat the drum on to fix because if we let, allow them to not put it in, 
what do we end up with? We end up with a lot less money to continue that infrastructure issue. So I think that's something we should continue to talk about around this horseshoe. Um, I think that the wording around the surf replacements is pretty squishy as it is, but ultimately it all en ends up with us. And you're right, but it's our, our goal as, you know, aldermen and older women, like our job is to make sure that we're being thoughtful for the taxpayers. A lot of these improvements are going to end up making it a better investment, but we need to talk about those things. And so none of these things are mandates. If you don't go get an electric car, then you know, at 60,000 versus 30,000, this is, you're, you're not in compliance with this. That's not what we're trying to say. Um, I think it is making sure that the conversation happens. And when you're sitting in that seat, Alderman Clee, Alderman Gavea, and finance, and they say, hey, here's what it is, and here's what the maintenance on this cost car will, will be over the, you know, the, the next 20 years versus if you get an electric car. And we just need to start talking about it. I think you're right about the infrastructure, but we've been very intentional about making sure that we're not just saying let's get electric cars that we're also looking at how we're adding that infrastructure slowly and starting to get the city in a place where the fact that you know miss miss brown is here as our energy manager we're really starting to slowly work so i, I want to make sure that everyone feels that there's very intentional in terms of making slow steps towards progress we're not telling i i won't go to my constituents and say you know we're gonna be, we're gonna get the hundred thousand dollar car instead of the thirty thousand dollar car and here's why but if i could say here's why we're thinking you know maybe ten thousand dollars more right now is going to be a better investment for the city over the long run i'm willing to have that conversation um but i think that's that's why we're here to have those like common sense there's nothing here that we want to go over and above and and make these crazy um changes to how we run the city uh we still need to be fiscally responsible but thinking about it from a long term and how do we start to slowly make those changes. Alderman Glick. Thank you. Um, they, while I always have anxiety about any of the in lieu of, mm -hmm. um, the, the sidewalk in lieu of, like for instance, I used Bartlett Street to put in a small piece of sidewalk that would be required would have literally been a sidewalk to nowhere. And there's no more build that's gonna happen in that area. So I do like in that particular case now, if it were on a busy street like East Hollis or, or something like that, they, and I, truthfully, I don't know whether or not there's a sidewalk there, but just but using that one there, um, that might be a sidewalk to nowhere. But if there was a potential for growth within that area, I would I would still like to see it. And the planning board does make those decisions, so um, that money does go to that. So I think we need to keep it. But getting back to item number five, while I did say that when not possible is it's not defined and it's um, squishy to some extent, my fear is when we do a resolution, it's not for just this body that's sitting here today, it's for the body that's going to be coming in possibly to replace us or, or future. And everybody interprets things. And I can tell you from being up in the state house, when you say words like shall or may, there's a big diff there's a big difference here when not possible w what is the definition of not possible I, I guess i would and i don't know enough about the difference between an electric cost and a uh, a gas um, type vehicle mm -hmm. um, if right now there's only a 10 percent difference a 10 percent difference on a thirty thousand dollar car isn't a lot of money a 10% difference on a $75,000 car, we start getting more and more. Yep. So I, I guess I would, I would love it to say that when you bring forward a request, whether it to be public works or finance or whatever, that they literally have to bring both to us and that we determine based on the budget. And the budget may be when not possible. Does that, does that make sense? I still want to see us try to get this goal of as much electric as possible, but I would like to be able to evaluate each of these purchases um, on an as, you know, as it comes up type of, of basis. I mean, as, as I said, you know, um, Alderman Gouvet is also on finance, and we've been seeing so much of this increase. We're going to get to the point where we're going to have to say no to a vehicle because we keep pushing up more and more. And, and again, as I said, they're reevaluating the entire surf list right now. Um, they've always done the 5% pad. It's not enough because we have a 9% to 10% to 8% inflation rate. 
Um, so now they have to go through every item there. Should we have a second column for what is, and I do realize you said passenger vehicle, and we're not talking about the big dumpers or, or anything of, of, of that nature, but um, I, I guess I would prefer to say that, that, and make it a mandate, that they have to bring us both prices, mm -hmm. and that it, each one is evaluated at, I would like to see that, and I have no problem with that being a mandate. I just have a problem saying that the, it will be fully electric or when not possible. I take not possible, meaning that it doesn't exist, that that particular vehicle doesn't exist. I want to think about it as dollars and cents. We are the stewards of the um, taxpayer, so thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, you know, I mean, I think the language is good. I mean, I can see where people might think that, but I th when I, I think of when not possible, I think if it can't be done. And it could be we, there's not one possible. Maybe they don't have a vehicle that's electric for that particular thing, or maybe we can't be done because the price is, not, is too high for us. And I think, you know, to uh, Alderman Kelly's point about some of this is starting those, these discussions on this stuff. And I think, you know, and I think I heard it at one of the finance meetings where someone asked uh, whoever was trying to purchase something or maybe it was with the police or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, did you have a, did you go for an electric vehicle on this? And, and what is the difference? And uh, whatever it was, was, was too much. But I think that's the questions we need to have every time now. It's like, did you look into an electric vehicle? You didn't, then go away and come back with both, right? That's the discussions we need to have. And mm -hmm. if it's too much, we vote on it. You know, the, the finance would vote on it. and you know, would come to us to vote on it. And if it's too much, we, do, we don't go for it. And we go for the, the one that makes more fiscal sense. But, you know, if it's just a few dollars more, we go for it. And, but we have to ask those questions every time now. And I think that's where we start these discussions with these departments. And I think, you know, DPW and some of these other ones, police, fire, whatever, they have to start looking into those things and have to bring both to us. Now, do you mandate it? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not for mandates either for most things. I know, look at my record, I didn't vote for the mask mandate. But, you know, generally I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't do that, right? So I wouldn't want to force someone into that. But I think they should come with both prices if they want to get it through us. Yes. We're going to have to see what it costs for the electric. And again, if it's too much, I'm not voting for it either. And I'm not on finance, but if it came to the BOA, um, I'm not voting for it if it's too much money. So that's how I look at that language of if it can't be done if it's not available or, or if it's too much, we just don't do it. If it doesn't fit the city, we don't do it. But to everybody's point, we want to start talking about how we do this better. And, you know, if we have one or two or three more vehicles out there that are electric that we didn't have last year, it's a win, right? If we keep continue to grow the city in a better place for energy and the sustainability and whatever, we, we've done our job of trying to get better without breaking the bank so that the city is not crashing, right? So. Um, that's how I look at it. Yeah. I would also say that, you know, the discussion here is part of the, the point of this legislation, right? As stewards of our constituents and, you know, the money that comes into the city, we should be asking these questions. And so making these recommendations a lot more um, in depth and specific was so that when we are all sitting around at finance committee or infrastructure committee or housing trust fund committee, we're putting in a new boiler, whatever it is, that we're starting to bring these up uh, because we're aware of the options that could be out there and we can use uh, Ms. Brown as, as a resource to say, hey, I know that this is happening at the school. Do you know if there's any you know, energy alternatives we should be considering? Could you talk to something? So I think the discussion is also really part of the, part of the plan here, ultimately. Thank you again. Um, and as I said, I, I don't really care much for mandates. And the reason why I did say for a mandate to make them bring both prices to us is because if we say, did you look into the electric of this? And they say, no, we're going to send them back. And that delay is what costs money. And I will give you a perfect example. Um, we had an item that Public Works had approved in August. It didn't hit finance until um, November, and I think there was like about a 12 or 14 percent increase. And right now, no one is guaranteeing prices. So when we put out a purchase order and we get that, so we don't want to send anybody back. We don't want any delay in purchases. I think it's really important 
that, you know, if you want to just suggest it, that's fine. But when it comes to finance, and most things, unless it's over a million dollars or a multi-year contract, does not come to the Board of Aldermen. It sits with finance. Um, it's a very unique committee, and um, I don't want to see delay. And to, to eliminate delay, because of this ha happening, we are now asking that public works and finance look at things simultaneously, that we don't wait to get there. If the finance committee meets first, we always say that we're voting maybe yes for it, dependent on public works decision. If they say no, then it's dead in the water. Um, but we're not waiting to get their decision before we start to do that. We're trying to streamline things to reduce the costs of now. So that's why I say I would like to see you put language in that they have to bring both prices to you, or at least that they've looked into it, and, you know, and I think they would look to you. And I don't think it's that much more work to ask them to do that because they're already looking at prices. They're kind of doing that um, particular thing. So, um, And that's why I do think it's important. I do think, just like I said, um, when not possible can be squishy. Um, that's why some people like to say may. That means you don't have to do it. Or shall, meaning that you will do it. Um, when not possible, I could define that as it's not available. In other words, no one makes that kind of type of thing. Or it could mean when not possible because it's 20% more. I'm being, it's been very subjective and I'm making that decision and then we're going to have this argument here. I would like it to be defined that when not possible, meaning it doesn't exist or that it's X amount percent over um, the other item. And I know, I, I, I feel like I'm putting, being a wet blanket on all of this. You guys did so much work, so. I, I do feel very bad about it, but I, it's being on finance, I'm seeing this firsthand. So, any other? All of you go back. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would have to agree with my colleague from Ward Three. I don't think that the lapse in language on the fifth point would be a reason I wouldn't vote for it, but. Some clarity there, I think, would be good because you know putting it in that we have to see both options. I think might be for the betterment of everybody because you are line by line right next to each other, seeing the differences. Now, as you are the author of the legislation, would you be open to talking about something like that? Or there's no, I don't see anything that makes this need to go into effect immediately. Would you be open to? Maybe we hold off on this legislation and talk about the language in number five, or uh, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, this doesn't kill the legislation for me, but it, it is something I, I wouldn't mind seeing. I think that it's, it's a good point, and I think your timing perspective is a good point. Um, What I'm concerned about is if it's additional staff time to go look for it. It doesn't I seem so. like it would be, but I sure. would love to like mm -hmm. make sure before we're like, yes, and now you have to look into every electric vehicle out there before you come to finance. Um, but I think yep. your timing perspective makes a lot of sense. Um, I also think the discussion around maintenance, if you could see the cost and then the 10-year maintenance right. and then the cost and yes. then the 10-year maintenance cost, that could give you a... I don't know if there's a life cycle cost to a vehicle. There might be. It's not my purview. I'm not. But that might be interesting to look at as well. So you're kind of comparing apples to apples. But so, Ms. Brown, do you want to weigh in and then? Yeah. yeah. I, I believe that the climate mayors have an electric vehicle comparison tool where you can compare um, electric vehicles to um, hybrids and to gas and diesel vehicles. I can look further into that and share that with you. And I think that there is potential to edit this to be a little bit more clear. I guess my, go ahead. I'll nope, ahead. after you. I, I, was, I guess my, what I would love to see us do is forward it with a recommendation and then Dory and I could bring in a, um, an amendment when we put it in front of the full board because it's not it's not we're not that far apart right and i'd rather ask legal than try to do it in committee if if the committee is okay with that i'm i'm happy to work with doria and legal to have it for when it goes to full board 
I'm, uh, I'm fine with that. I was going to move the table, but with that plan, I would be perfectly fine with okay. doing making that as a uh, full board amendment. Okay, awesome. All right, so then I will work with you to make that adjustment. Is there any other discussion on this, Alderman Clay? Thank, thank you. Um, just just so that we know, as part of the life cycle, quite often some of the vehicles that we have are used for trade-in which actually reduces the cost of them. And some aren't. Some we just say we're not going to trade it in, we're keeping it for parts. Or we're keeping it as a backup yeah. um, because they don't have enough as it is. So if something breaks down, they're not stuck without anything. They have this backup. So, so uh, those are some of the things to just to keep in mind. Sometimes it's parts, sometimes it's that. Um, again, I'm not on this committee. You all get to, to, to voice that. Um, I like work done in the committee, and we've oft, often talked about that. I, I personally don't feel comfortable with it going to the board um, without that kind of prelude of, of an amendment, because then what it does is it starts that discussion all over again. I would, I mean, I don't see why we have to go to legal. I think you could possibly make an amendment here on the fly. We've done it before, um, and you know, if it has to get cleaned up later on by um, legal, that's that's one thing. But I would like it to go forward if, you know, and I agree with you, we are not far apart. I just want to make sure that we we put that through, that they have to come through here. I feel this is a, man, a mandate. There's no doubt in my mind. I feel that what you have written here, even though there's a squishy word when not possible, I take that at not possible, meaning that it doesn't exist. Not, not the cash amount with it, so. I want the wiggle room in finance to be able to say, no, this is too much money. I don't, you know, maybe creative people will say when not possible means that it's not possible because it doesn't exist in the budget. You know, we, we, we can define the words in a way we want, but just my opinion, I'm not on this committee. Um, I will talk about it when it gets to the board as well. So thank you. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, I mean, I'm not I'm really not for amending it here. I'd rather rather be taken back and amended if, if necessary. I mean, I would have been fine with it the way it is. Um, you know, it's fine if we change some of the wording to be a little more specific. I, I think, I, I don't think we should put in, you know, percents. If it's 10%, we don't do it or we do do it or, or, or whatever. I think we have to be careful then because times change, things change. You know, down the road, we don't know what's going to be. I think it needs to be open to a certain extent to be able to make those decisions in the finance committee if it's truly at the time that particular vehicle we can do it we can't do it um, there's lots of other things that could happen you know it depends on what the vehicle is depends on the situation how much it's needed um, and so I think I think having it open to a certain extent is 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 better um, but I would rather see it if, if we're going to amend it I'd rather see it with the full board um, we're missing, you know, a couple of guys, or a couple of aldermen, I should say, I shouldn't say guys. Um, aldermen from this committee that would have some great insight too, and maybe we can hear that at the full board. I, I wasn't in favor of tabling it because I think it's important and a lot of work's been done on it, and I think we should we should go forward with it. But, um, you know, I'd rather it go to the BOA. And I know I always say don't deliberate it in the BOA, hash it out in committee, but there's really only three of us on the committee today, and I, I think that... Uh, yeah, you know, and even like Alderman Jetty, who's done a lot of work with energy, I'd like to hear his opinion on this as well, because um, I know he's been someone that's been very um, outspoken about the energy stuff, and I think his his comments would be be great as well, even though he's not on this committee. So I, I'd like to bring it to the BOA personally. But. So I, I want to point out that Alderman Jetty is the alternate to this committee, and he attends meetings very frequently yeah. and has been exactly. a part of this. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Great insight. Yeah. Okay. The motion is to recommend final passage. Is there additional discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Victoria, I'll follow up with you. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you to everyone for the lively discussion on this piece. Okay, we already did table did in committee. We moved over that, right? Nothing else is coming off the table. Uh, we have an, uh, another period for public comment. Does anyone want to speak? Enough of speaking this evening. <laughs> Anything from general discussion from the committee? Would anyone, Alderman, like to make remarks? 
May I? Alder Clay. Thank you so much. Um, I, I, I played hooky from the joint special just to be here um, today for a number of reasons. One was because over 50% of your, your uh, Performing Arts Center, as well as the ones that you were nominating today, were either Ward 3 or Business in Ward 3. Um, and, and this bill that we just kind of discussed and so on um, is, is very important. And I just want to make sure that we get it um, right. Um, I think it's important for it to go through. Um, I just, that. Um, I'll, I'll stop there. But I also want to, on a, on a happier note, Ward 3 is going to have their Ward 3 block party again. Um, we had originally scheduled it for the, um, last year it was in, in the fall, this year it's going to be on August 13th. It was originally scheduled for August 12th at the, um, we were hoping to have it at the Loft 34 parking lot, the Greeley house. But there's going to be work done on the sidewalks and so on there, so we've decided to move it to Greeley Park. So the Ward 3, um, as we're calling it this year, not Riverfest, <laughs> uh, block party, um, will be held on the uh, 13th of August, and uh, the time will be announced and, and so on. But we're really hoping to have it there, and we actually have bathrooms this time um, without having to rent a porta potty because we have Greeley Park, and we have a stage. So uh, thank you. Are non-residents of Ward 3 able to attend? Everybody is. <laughs> Greeley Park is open to Nashua's, Nashua's and to... outside. It would be kind of hard <laughs> to keep everybody out, and we want to welcome everybody. Just like Ward 4 has their block party, and I go every year. In jest, but yes. thank you for putting that together, Alderman Clay. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I just wanted to mention that the mayor has one of his last, he has two more left for town hall meetings uh, on Wednesday. This one's in Ward 9. I say it because Ward 8 abuts it, so there could be some Ward 8 members could go to it because uh, there's certainly going to be discussion about things that are going to impact Ward 8, I'm sure. Uh, disc golf will come up, so feel free if you didn't make mine a couple weeks ago in Ward 8, please come to this one in Ward 9 and, uh, you know, for any Ward 9 people out there, actually, absolutely go. It's, it's worth going and, uh, you know, there's only a couple left, is that, and then there's Ward 2 coming up hopefully soon. It needs to be rescheduled though, so thank you. Okay. Is there a motion? Oh, I don't have a vice chair. Someone make a motion. Uh, I move to adjourn. <laughs> motion is to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, everyone, for attending. Have a lovely, what is it, Monday? Monday.